progress. Uh, so let's introduce this because I might make this into a YouTube video, so I'll need a little introduction, of course. <laughs> Okay, hello and welcome to game two between the Viper and Chris of round four of the GML. This was uh, Monday's game, so it's still three days late, but we're catching up slowly and surely. We will get through all of the games today, I'm sure. I'm going to continue streaming uh, throughout the day, throughout the afternoon or whatever. And, uh, and yeah, so this is game two between these guys, and as you know... Viper lost that first game, unfortunately obviously it dropped so we didn't get to see the ending completely but uh, yeah, second map though is Chris versus Viper on Yucatan and the civilizations are Mongols Mongols for the Viper, Mongols for Chris and that is uh, a civilization we've not seen in this tournament yet it's uh, Mongols war on Yucatan which we haven't seen yet either so it's all good in the hood and um, yeah we'll see what Chris can do here he's probably got a really big com confidence boost now he managed to beat the Viper in that first game and uh, now he's probably feeling you know what I can win this game too so let's see if he can take another game from the Viper Viper of course probably gonna be a bit pissed off he probably wasn't expecting to lose that he's obviously uh, not used to losing and I don't really know if he's a sore loser or not I don't think he is but regardless Let's have a look then. Mongols. What is so good about the Mongols? Well, Mongols have an increased hunt rate, uh, gather rate. So they gather from boar really quickly. And sometimes when you watch uh, Mongol games on Arabia, you see extremely fast uh, feudals or you see really good drushes. So we could see drushing, we could see fast, uh, fast feudaling and pressure. But you've got to bear in mind the map. The map here is Yucatan, as I just said. And we've got this big river running through the middle. Let's find where the crossing points are. Oh, where's the crossing point? There's a crossing point here. There's actually some gold on that crossing point, which is interesting. There's also a crossing point over here and here. So there's three crossing points to this map, and they happen to be on the far side away from where they're based. So Chris obviously on the left, Viper on the left, and the crossing points are all on the right. So I think it's going to be pretty hard to drush in this situation due to the crossing points. And we'll see how they end up scouting this. They're going to want to scout pretty well. Mongols scout cavalry, extra line of sight. So uh, usually really good scouting from Mongol players. Uh, they can get a good map coverage very early on, do some very efficient scouting, and find the crossing points on this river. It's going to be really important to find because uh, early game aggression in Mongol Wars is very possible, very plausible, and uh, we'll see how it goes. could be very possible to do a fast castle as well. That increased hunting time means that uh, your villagers can get extra food overall. So we'll see how it goes. And I'm really 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 cold my room is freezing um, it's like really cold in England now and uh, and it's really cold in my house as well because I don't have double glazing or anything um, so it's absolutely like ice and I might have to go and put a coat on in a minute uh, luring his first boar in now and Chris probably gonna be doing the same reasonably soon sending a villager out to build a house on these guys and of course Yucatan as well is worth mentioning a lot of resources a lot of heavy resources two boar nearby of course and there are lots of deer as well a uh, big deer patch over here for the viper and wow okay Chris managed to steal a couple of a couple of the viper's turkeys that's kind of interesting and there's also double berry patches as well for both of them as well as quite a few turkeys as well viper his map not so great actually he's um He's got three boar. I didn't actually notice the boar on the right. There's three. But uh, his deer are quite far away, so he's going to have to mill these if he wants to take them. And uh, Chris's map, nice indeed. He's got three boar as well, I'm sure of it. Yeah, two over here on the left, one on the right, two berry patches, and lots of yummy deer as well. And uh, obviously because of the increased hunting rate of the Mongols, collecting deer, really good. And that's uh, something you see quite a lot of. So I'd be surprised if they didn't take deer, to be honest, considering the amount they've got there. And I think that Chris managed to take the Viper's uh, sheep. Uh, has he done it? Has he done it? No, he's not done it. Uh, oh no, he has. There we go. He stole the turkeys. That's really nice. So Chris going to get a very nice little food boost at the start. There's another two boar over here, but too far away for anyone to lure successfully. Not really worth doing or taking the risk. And uh, and yeah, so let's see it there scouting then. Viper starting to scout Chris's side. He knows exactly where the choke point is. And he doesn't know if there's one on the left just yet. We'll see if uh, he actually notices. He may have set his scout to go over there and the scout didn't go left so he assumes that there's not a crossing point. But it's always better to be safe than sorry. 
So Viper going to scout around. He's going to see Chris's TC. Is Chris going to garrison to take out his scout? He could do it. He's going to be really close. And if I think if Chris was a little bit faster there, he may have actually taken out uh, Viper's scout. That was really close, and that would have been a real blow to the Viper there. But Chris, for the time being, continuing to scout. He's got uh, some map coverage of the Viper's side. Where is his scout cavalry? Where has his scout cavalry gone? Where has it gone? Where has it gone? Where has it gone? It's over here on the right hand side. So he's found the choke point as well, obviously. But neither of them have found the other two choke or crossing points. And this is kind of interesting because if you don't find all of the crossing points, your opponent can sneak on you. And they can actually sneak units by without you realizing. And it's always handy to know where the gaps are between you and the enemy and make sure you're fully walled or at least where you know they're going to be coming from so you can prepare for it. Chris, uh, Viper even, just luring his second boar. Chris with a barracks going down. Looks like he's going to go for a drush and it could work. Um, doesn't look like Viper's got a barracks going up yet unless he's got... nope unless he's sending a villager to do a forward which really isn't Viper's style he might be going to wall this but Chris going with a Drush right now which is kind of interesting he might be able to do some damage with it so yeah definitely gonna gather some more gold up with this villager and looking to get the aggression on very early and as I said with Mongols very easy to do a Drush due to that uh, hunt speed and of course on Yucatan with just so many um, so many animals around to, to kill, slaughter and take their food so we are going to see a drush from Chris. How effective is it going to be? That's the question, because it looks to me like the Viper's starting to wall right now. And if he does wall successfully, then Chris's drush is going to be completely unsuccessful. Um, and Viper's wall is going to be really easy. He's only got to wall this. He's only got to wall this. And he's only got to wall this and this. And that is really not a big wall to do in order to stop your opponent from getting to you at all. So really nice sort of map for Viper here. Very easily wallable considering all the crossing points are in this side. Um, so very easily to wall. If we look at Chris's map, well, there's absolutely nothing for him to wall here. He's got... Um, open area here and it's all just open right the way up to his town centre so Chris gonna be a little hard pressed to wall this one so I think that's perhaps why he's gonna go with this early aggression to try and keep Viper in his base and uh, and try and coop him up but Viper with this wall already going up could mean that Chris's uh, drush is completely ineffective which would be kind of unfortunate for Chris he's not gonna be able if he doesn't manage to do anything with his drush then that's just uh, a real problem because he's just wasted so much food he could have spent that on going feudal and then he would have castled faster or whatever so uh, kind of risky going with this now uh, doesn't look like it's going to be worth it to be honest. Viper's going to be fully walled in a moment and I don't think Chris is going to get through to his base. So Viper, nice little position here and it looks like, yeah, already up to the feudal age in a little bit of a faster time as he's not obviously rushing and he is then going to be going perhaps for a fast castle. If you have a look at how much food he's already got, he's nearly at 800 already. The uh, gold here, three gold collectors, it's pretty much a standard fast castle build. Uh, Barracks going up anyway as well. Viper might know this drush is coming in. No, he doesn't know this drush is coming in uh, unless he's seen the barracks. He, yeah, he's seen the barracks, so he's going to build a barracks of his own just in case might decide to make a couple of militia but at the moment he's actually fully walled and look how far Chris has to go with these militia to get around to the Viper's side it's not going to happen anytime soon and uh, Viper will be feudal by that time and if he walls this area by the time Chris gets through he's probably going to be a uh, castle so looking pretty good for Viper so far looking pretty good for Chris apart from his map unfortunately a very open map on this side we'll see what he decides to do once he reaches uh, once he reaches feudal uh, and yeah, so more food coming in. He's got sorry, plenty of food already. More wood coming in. He needs to get his uh, whatever he decides to go for. He could go for an archer range. Could go for a stable and a blacksmith. He could go for a market and a blacksmith. We'll have to wait and see. Of course, it's cheaper to go for a stable and a blacksmith. Let's have a look. What is he gonna do? What is he gonna do? Feudal age just now, and uh, stable and blacksmith. So. It's going to be a stable blacksmith fast castle, and he might go with some light cavalry. Um, 
Mongols are not the best for heavy cavalry, but they do get the Hussar upgrade, which does mean that they can go very quick with light cavalry and do some nice eco harassment, eco raiding, which uh, might be what Viper's aiming to do. But really, their power is in the Mangadai and the cavalry archer because they fire faster. And Mangadai, obviously, their elite unit, pretty darn strong. So we'll see where that goes. Um, see what happens. Chris is Drush just making it across the map right now. He might be able to get in here and do a bit of damage, perhaps. But uh, I don't see that coming anytime soon. Um, it's so I can't believe that he built this Drush at like I don't know eight minutes and twelve minutes. He's not even reached the Viper's base yet. That's just insane. Um, this map really horrible for drushing. But Viper, there we go, up to the Castle Age in a nice time. Chris going to be doing the same stable blacksmith and. We'll see Castle from him in just a second, lacking a little bit of gold for now, but he has got the buildings he needs, he's got the food he needs, and he can go up to the Castle Age as well. Um, I'm just looking at the wrong person. I, I always do this, I'm really sorry. Chris actually going with an archery range and a blacksmith. So, uh, interesting. Chris going for archery range, Viper going for stable. Could indicate something. Um, I doubt Chris is going to be making archers, to be honest with you. He might decide to make some cavalry archers, but I don't see it. There's not really much point when he can make Mangadai, but perhaps he's going to add some of those in. Perhaps he's going to get Thumb Ring. Um, I can't even remember if they get Thumb Ring. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Where is it? Wow, I'm blind. Yeah, they do get Thumb Ring. Of course they do. And uh, so yeah, he might be just getting that up to get Thumb Ring once he reaches Castle. We'll see, we'll see. But I don't think uh, Chris is going to be able to do so much damage to the Viper for the time being. He's fully walled, and unless he manages to do something with this Drush, which... Uh, yes, he got a Villager! Nice! Chris actually got a Villager, that was really good. So his Drush did pay off in the end, I guess. He killed one of the Villagers, he's preventing these guys from gathering any deer. He was looking for a second, but unfortunately unable to get that. And uh, Chris now just sort of chilling with his militia, not going to be able to do too much. And up to the castle age he goes, Viper up to the castle age. And I'm interested to see what he does when he reaches castle. Uh, I don't see him taking any stone just yet, but he has got enough wood for another two town centres. We might see a town centre on the stone, this would be a good place on wood and stone. Going for the castle and uh, we might see one on the gold, we'll have to wait and see um, but Viper up to the castle age in just a sec Chris gonna be doing the same what's his plan, what's his plan uh, at the moment nothing to really indicate what he's planning on doing the archery range not such a good uh, indicator although another A archery range is being added on so he could be going for some archers, he actually is, there we go and that's kind of interesting to me he's going for archers and he might upgrade those to crossbows sending them to the shore interesting interesting he could actually be going for a dock to try and land these over because if we have a look he's walling this off he knows that viper is walled it's a long way around to do any feudal aggression or castle aggression um he could be going for a dock here he could actually be trying to land a viper which would be interesting because the viper doesn't have a dock he doesn't have any military on the water and a landing from chris could be pretty deadly actually so he's actually going to go for crossbowmen and he's going to go and land them which is which is really nice actually, I don't think Viper will be expecting that at all and that would be a great play by Chris if he manages to do some big damage of course Viper with this stable here though he will be able to, here we go, he's already got a knight out so he will be able to defend fairly easily if he scouts it but if he doesn't scout it then Chris could do quite a bit of damage with his landing two town centers going up, one on this stone uh, so he can start work on his castle and one on the wood down here interesting of course uh, they do need a lot of wood and gold because Mangadai costing wood and gold of course but uh, yeah it looks like Chris is gonna go and land where's the dock though I don't see the dock just yet but we might see crossbowmen being upgraded in a moment and where is the dock where is the dock mr. Chris where is your villager building the dock I don't know He's kind of wasting time, it seems here. He could already have the dock up and be working on the transport ship, but I don't know how effective this is going to be. It's going to be a little bit risky. If he goes to land, Viper could quite easily scout it and put an end to it very quickly. But more archers coming out, so it seems that Chris is going to commit to this, and he just spent quite a bit of, a bit of wood, so... Nope, still no dock. I'm just trying to keep my eye out for this. Where is it? Maybe he's not going to dock, then. Maybe he's going to bust his own wall and try and bust through here. I've got no idea what he's trying to do at the moment, but he's just uh, getting up his town centres for the time being. 
So perhaps he's going to land, perhaps he's not. We'll have to wait and see. I'm going to speed things up until we get to something a little bit more indicative, indicative, I don't know the word, <laughs> of what's going to happen. And uh, for the time being, though, Viper not really going to make much military at all because he's just uh, playing, def well, not defensively, but he's just going to work on his macro because he knows that there's not any real threat from Chris for the time being. And is that a dock there? Yes, it is. There we go, the dock going down for Chris, crossbowmen being upgraded, and the transport ship will be on the way. So, Chris is going to go for a landing. Let's see where he could actually attack here. He's already got his scout over on the Viper's side. He sees this uh, this gold here. A couple of crossbowmen over here could kill off a few villagers. That would be very nice. A couple of crossbowmen here could kill some villagers on the berries. And overall, I think this is going to pay off for Chris. Uh, this, this dock and the transport ship, I think it's going to pay off. A nice bit of early aggression. It's the only way he's really going to be able to pressure Viper early on. And if he can slow his economy down and do some big damage, then that would work out really well. He could also send some villagers over and, uh, and build an archery range here and keep the pressure on. That would be really good if he does that. But for the time being, we've got 10 crossbowmen, and I think Viper's going to lose a few villagers here. Chris could get in there before they retreat to the town centre, kill a few off, and that could be a really nice little play from Chris. Let's have a look what he does. He's got Fletching, and there we go. One dead villager, two of a dead villager, three dead villager. Come on, is he going to get another one? This could be really bad for, for Viper here. This could be really, really bad. Another one dead and four dead, and he's cleaned up on the gold. Viper forced away from berries, and that is not good for him at all. Retreating all of these villagers away, and Chris with a nice little attack there. The only thing is, he's got to make this pay now. He's only killed four villagers, and it's probably not worth the cost of ten crossbowmen. So he's going to need to make this pay. And at the moment, Viper does have one knight out. I wouldn't be surprised if he's adding another knight in right now. Uh, no, not just yet. He did make a siege workshop, though, so we'll see a mangonel from him, and he'll try and flatten these crossbowmen, which uh, might just happen. But I'm surprised still that Chris hasn't sent a villager over. There's, uh, oh, there's one coming over now with some crossbows. But uh, if he sent the villager over first and had an archery range up, he could really easily reinforce or build even a siege workshop of his own and pile the pressure on. That would work out really well for him, but there we go, sending the villager over now. And uh, there he is, Mr. Lumberjack. And what will we see? Will we see a siege workshop? That would work out really well if he did that. And we're just going to wait to see what it is. Yes, it's a siege workshop. So he could make a siege workshop. A couple of uh, Manganels. Manganel down this town centre, perhaps. But Viper already well aware that Chris is here, getting a siege workshop of his own. A Manganel queue coming out right now. Another Manganel queued up. So it looks like Viper's going to be very well prepared to deal with this attack from Chris and it looks to me like he's going to be just fine for the time being and really not so much going on right now and oh 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 Viper noticing this villager this villager going to palisade itself in nicely done by Chris there good job he saw that knight because otherwise that villager would have died and he would have lost his forward uh, or his land really um, I don't know if you could really call this a forward because it was a landing but uh, either way He's going to get this uh, this uh, siege workshop up, and Viper though already with uh, two mangonels now, and I think he's going to be able to defend against this just fine. To be honest with you, Chris might decide to add another archery range. It could pay off. It could pay off. Nice kill on the uh, on the knight there before it can even get to him. And Viper might be adding more knights. Uh, why is he not adding more knights? He's adding another stable, but he's not adding more knights just yet. And uh, they could be really useful to defend his mangonels. But uh, I think, yeah, Chris going to be absolutely fine for the time being. Um, Viper is coming in with the mangonels, though. So how long these crossbows last is is yet to be seen. We'll have to wait and see if he gets a good hit. Now Chris knows the mangonels are there, at the very least, and see what he can do. He's going to have to play it very defensively, get a mangonel of his own, maybe even two to deal with that. And, oh, nice, walling up his gold as well. Being a nuisance, why not? Uh, but this villager could be making another archery range and uh, keeping the pressure on, or even a stable. A couple of uh, scout cavalry or light cavalry in here could do quite a bit of damage. If he, he could pick off some villagers at the back, he could pick off a couple of villagers quite easily. He could even take out the mangonels if they stray too far from the town centres. So a light cavalry would really help Chris out in this situation situation I think. But it looks like Viper going to be adding in some knights here. Oh, Bloodlines being researched. But still no knights just yet. A third stable going down. He could be going for some light cavalry actually. Have to wait and see. 
but Chris does have a Mangonel now out of his own. If he can micro this really well, then he could actually kill off the Mangonel of Viper and keep his Mangonel alive. It would be really good if he could do that. Very close. If he wasn't on the hill then, he would have actually lost his Mangonel. So, kind of good for Chris. It looks like he's going to take out uh, Viper's Mangonel, but that's uh, a Mangonel for a Mangonel. Nothing lost, nothing gained. And Chris with a second Mangonel now. He needs to do some damage here though. He's spending a lot of resources over here. He's not really making it pay. He's not doing that much with it. And his villager not being so useful either. As I said, he could have another archery range, he could have a stable, but uh, he's not. And he's not really pushing this area much at at all. But what's going on back at home? At the moment, not so much. Just working on his eco. Three TCs still. Viper on three as well. Plenty of farms coming down. And maybe we'll see Imperial reasonably soon. But uh, a castle is likely to be coming out from the Viper really shortly. A couple of knights as well. They've got bloodlines now, so they'll be able to deal with the archers a little bit easier. But Viper now with enough stone for a castle could place the castle down really soon. Where he'd place it, I don't know. Maybe he'd place it here to uh, protect this gold a bit and uh, and start pushing this back. Um, or he could place it somewhere else. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, for the time being, his castle is up. Uh, sorry, he's got enough stone for a castle. And we'll just wait to see where he decides to put it. Two mangonels coming in for Chris, though. And Viper with only one mangonel. So Chris could really start pushing forwards here. And if he does, he could do a lot of damage, as I said. He's just not. He's holding back. He's a little bit scared to push. And I don't really know why because obviously as we can see he's got the advantage. What he sees though might be different. But really he could do quite a bit of damage if he does push, his push right now. Uh, obviously now shortly Viper is going to have enough stables to get enough knights. A castle going up on the right hand side. He's deciding not to put it on the gold which is kind of interesting. Perhaps he thinks that Chris is trying to take water control which he kind of is. Um... But for the time being, still not a lot going on on this side. So I'm going to fast forward things a little bit whilst uh, whilst these mangonels demolish that uh, mining camp right there. What is Viper doing? He's got another mangonel. Is he going to be able to take out the mangonels from Chris? Let's see. Well, he's going to be able to kill a crossbowman, that's for sure. Can he do much else? Uh, I don't really think he can. Uh, Chris, of course, does have bodkin arrows, so it makes it a little bit easier to take out the mangonels. Five knights now on the right-hand side, and maybe we'll see some mangadai coming out as well. Yeah, they're a little bit too expensive, really, at the moment. He's not got any gold coming in, so it's a little bit risky to do that. Uh, his only gold pile is here that he's collecting from, or that he can collect from at the moment. So, really, Viper just getting a lot of stone and uh, making... Another castle likely is going to be sorry. Making another castle is likely to happen. That's what I meant to say. That totally came out wrong. Uh, but yeah, still not so much going on on the left side. I think Viper looking to take out this force pretty soon. No Mangadai is coming out yet, and really not so much going on either with anything else. Uh, no, no more knights, and he needs to push this away because Chris is denying him gold. And that is kind of not good at all. And uh, Manganel coming in. Can he take out the Manganel? Looks like he'll be able to do it. And that Manganel is gone. And Chris's army is gone as well. There we go. And Chris is off of his land. So there we go. That was as easy as that. Viper pushing Chris back. Taking the score lead now by quite a bit. Thanks to taking out that army. And now Chris has got nothing to reinforce with. He doesn't have a archery range. He doesn't have any st anything else. He's stable or anything. So he's going to struggle here. He's not going to be able to defend against this at all. Another castle from the Viper, and uh, he's going to start taking this stone again. He's also going to go Imperial right now, which is a reasonable time.